My name is Ajit Paintel. Uh, I'm an assistant professor in pathology here at Northwestern, and I do both surgical pathology and cytopathology. So I've only been here about a year or so. Uh, I did my training, or part of it at least, at University of Chicago, uh, where you know we did a lot of work with Dr. Waxman, who you guys may or may not know. So I think what I say is pretty applicable to here and to UC and probably to most other institutions that do this type of EUS guided pancreas biopsy. <coughs> Uh, so I kind of wanted to break this up into three different parts. First, I'll talk about the diagnostic modalities that we use. So what are our tools for making a diagnosis in these biopsies? You know, when we talk about FNAs and cores and cell blocks, what does that all mean and how do we use these things to arrive at a diagnosis? Next, I'll give you guys, you know, the common diagnostic scenarios that we run into when we're up there with Shri and Raj uh, and how we sort of handle them in deciding what we want to do, FNA versus core, you know, flow cytometry, things like that, et cetera. And also in the end, I'll give you my diagnostic approach, which is pretty simple. Uh, it's just going to be one slide, but that, I think, sums things up pretty well. And again, I was kind of unclear about, like, what exactly you guys know and don't know. So if something doesn't make sense, just feel free to stop me. You can ask questions at any time, and it's not a big deal. So it's better for both of us if, you know, there's something you're not sure about, just blurt it out and ask it, and we'll stop and sort of resume. So yeah, just free, feel free to ask questions. OK, so we can start with diagnostic modalities. So you guys, are, I'm pretty sure, are familiar with Procore, since that's the business you're in. But the other main diagnostic modality we use is uh, fine needle aspiration. And so before Procore came along, fine needle aspiration was basically all we had when we were dealing with these pancreatic lesions, because that was the only type of needle that you could use at that site. You couldn't get a core. So FNA is sort of the old standard, so I just wanted to describe it for you guys and make sure you're familiar with it. So basically what you do in an FNA is you insert the needle into the lesion, and you do what looks to be sort of a jiggling motion with the needle, which I think is similar to what you do with the Procore as well. And this jiggling sort of a motion uh, serves to sort of cut small bits off the tissue, and the bits of tissue are then brought into the needle by a combination of capillary action and also a little bit of suction that you apply. So you're doing this jiggling motion to cut individual cells and small groups of cells and bring them into the needle. Once you're done, you remove the needle and you sort of squirt the contents of the needle, as you see up in the endoscopy suite, onto a slide. Uh, once you squirt it onto a slide, you can prepare slides uh, from that material that's on the slide. And then next, what we generally do is we'll take the needle that we used for the biopsy. It's still going to have like a few little crumbs of, you know, tumor or whatever in it. And we'll rinse it out in some sort of a solution, either RPMI or cytolite typically. And that material, as we'll get to later, is used for ancillary studies. So I had these movies that I had made yesterday of me doing an FNA on a grape. Um, but apparently they didn't work. So again, basically what you do is you insert the needle into the grape or pancreas or whatever, and you do that sort of jiggling motion. And while you're in the organ or the grape, you can sort of angle the needle around a little bit. So you can cover more ground than if you're just moving it straight in and out. You sort of angle it, and you get sort of a cone of area that you can biopsy in that sort of a manner. And then when you're done, um, this was supposed to be a video of me making smears, but again, you squirt whatever you've aspirated, that material, onto a slide. You rub two slides together and you then sort of smear them out. And so what you end up with, if you do an FNA, is two slides with a thin layer of material smeared onto them. And in the case of a pancreas biopsy, that thin material is going to be a combination of you know, a few cells, mucus, and blood. So after you do an FNA pass and you make slides, you generally have two slides available to you. And what you'll see that we generally do is that we make two different types of stains. So the first slide, this bottom slide there, uh, is a diff quick slide. So what we do for a diff quick slide is that that's when you see us drying the slide with a hair dryer. That's what that's all about. We're drying out the cells. And what that does is it obviously removes the water, and the cells sort of flatten on the slide. And the advantage there is that you, know, you can dry a slide really quickly, and you can do that in just a couple minutes. And once you're done, you just stain the slide, and it's ready to look at in just four or five minutes. So this is really useful for us because we can get an immediate look at what's going on in real time. We can tell them, you know, A, are you in the lesion? B, what type of lesion is it? And C, based on what type of lesion it is, what should we do next in terms of getting more material? More aspirates, cell block, Procore, et cetera. So the advantage of this is that it's really quick, and we can get a quick look at it. The drawback of this is that 
the, even though you can see the cellularity and some features of the tumor very well, uh, you don't, the morphology is not great. It's, it's fair to good, but it's not great. Uh, so some detail is sort of lost when you do it this way because you can sort of make the analogy to frying an egg. You know, when we dry these cells out, they sort of flatten. So even though, you know, when you make a fried egg, it's sort of analogous. It flattens it out and sort of blows it up. So it's still an egg, and it's still, you can tell it's an egg, but it's not the same round thing that you started out with. So it's sort of distorted. And so it makes it a little bit hard to evaluate for certain conditions, these diff-quick immediate slides. And so here's an example of one, and I'm not going to belabor it because, you know, it's not your job to look at slides, but, um, you know, here's a, here's a cancer cell here, and you can just see it's sort of blown up, and you can tell it's an abnormal cell, but it's really hard to see the detail of the cell. And I'll sort of show you something to contrast that to in a minute here. So the other type of stain that we do, and you'll see when we smear the slides, again, one we air dry with a hair dryer, and we make that diff quick slide. The other one, we'll always say, oh, no, no, hurry up, get that one in the alcohol, get it in the alcohol. And we'll either put it in a vial of alcohol, or else we'll spray it with an alcohol fixative. Um, and so these alcohol fixed slides, we can't process right away like with the diff quick slides. These alcohol slides, we need to take back to our lab after they've fixed in the alcohol, and they need to go on a machine, and they won't be ready for like a couple of hours or so. So in terms of immediate assessment, these alcohol fixed slides don't, aren't really worth anything to us. Uh, what they are good at is that since you're using alcohol to fix the cells, they stay much closer to their native sort of natural form. So if you can make the analogy that the diff quick air dried slide is like frying an egg and flattening it out, this is more like boiling an egg. You're still cooking it and <laughs> preserving it, but it's much closer to its native form than the diff quick one. So again, if you want to make that analogy, which I always do, the diff quick air drying is like frying an egg and this is like boiling an egg. So again, it's much closer to what the egg looked like when you started. Since the morphology is preserved better, uh, you know, you, you're able to make much more precise assessments of the cells. So you can see here, whereas the nuclei in the diffquick was just sort of a blob, here you can see, you know, little specks of DNA, and here's a nucleus here. This is just, you know, the nucleus, and the rest of this stuff is cytoplasm, and this is a big bunch of cells. So looking at the features of the nuclei is how we tell adenocarcinoma, garden variety pancreas cancer, from just, you know, benign pancreas cells. So since this stain lets us see the nuclei with the highest de degree of fidelity, we really like this when we're diagnosing garden variety pancreas cancer. So th this is very important for us. Okay, so just to summarize, whenever we, you see us make smears when we do these FNAs, uh, there's two that we usually make. We'll make two slides. One we'll make a diff quick out of, and that's very useful for us because it's quick and we can tell what's going on in real time. The alcohol fixed PAP slide is also useful because the nuclei are very well preserved and it's much truer to the native shape of the cells. So we really like this stain as well. But this one we have to wait to get back to our lab to look at. So it's not useful for immediate assessment. So each plays a role. Diff quick is good because it's quick. PAP is good because it's very, you know, has high fidelity to the native form of the cell. And again, yeah. So if you went ahead and right away in the room made a diagnosis, um, would you sort of go back and like offer more reassurance you were able to look at the nuclei with the other tests? Or how does the two work together? Oh, OK, that's a good question. So. Maybe I oversimplified it a little bit. So usually the question is, and I'll get to it more later, is it you know, adenocarcinoma or is it not? Can we diagnose adenocarcinoma yet or no? So generally, on a diff quick, if I'm going to diagnose adenocarcinoma, it has to be over the top. It has to be like, this is obvious. you know. Whereas with the PAP, and I'll show you later, my threshold is much lower. Like I'm much more willing to look at subtle abnormalities and say, yes, this is cancer. Whereas on a diff quick, since there's so much distortion, I'll need it to be really abnormal before I say that it's cancer. So it's just a matter of where you're drawing your threshold. But that, that's a good question. You can diagnose you know, pancreas cancer, adenocarcinoma on a diff quick, but your threshold is much higher. That's why we really like the PAP. So for it to be um, discernible on the diff quick, is it, would it likely be more advanced? Not necessarily advanced, but it has to be, you know, they talk about well differentiated, poorly differentiated. So some tumors are like, okay, these cells look awful. They look like, they look like hell, you know? So for example, here, you know, here's a normal group of cells up here. Those, you can't tell what's going on. This cell is like the Death Star, you know? It's like eight times the size of these cells next to it, and the nucleus has got this weird groove in it. So, I mean, th this is like, and I mean, obviously you wouldn't be expected to know this, but this, all the stuff around it is dead or what we call necrotic. 
So th this is like over the top, obvious, you know, show it to a medical student and it's, it's adenocarcinoma. So th when it's something like this, I'm happy to diagnose it on a diffquake and I know that I can be accurate. Whereas with this, you know, the, the, the abnormalities are much more subtle. The nuclei are still round, they're still sort of spaced out. You know, you've got a few weird cells sort of interspersed in there. And if I saw this on a diff quick, I probably couldn't make the diagnosis. But on a pap, since I know that this is very, you know, very true to what it looks like, you know, before we dry it out or do whatever, I'm happy to diagnose it on this. But again, if this was a diff quick, I couldn't do it. And also, yeah. Diagnosing that right now, what would you say? Oh, it's cancer. It's adenocarcinoma. Because of that one right in the middle. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, that's one of the criteria. Again, not to get too inside baseball for you guys, but like one of the criteria we use is if you know you have one nucleus that's like three times bigger than the nuclei around it, that's cancer. On, on a pap, on a diff quick, no way, but on a pap, for sure, anyone will call that cancer.